Okay, hi. Um, many of you would have thought that the terms of the velocity and acceleration were simple enough. Well, yeah, I think they're quite easy to comprehend. So now we're going to move to the third term, which is called the curvature of the curve. Now, you might really think that the curvature of the curve has something to do with about the curve being bending. Okay, well, you are correct. Okay, but before we go into that, we still need to recap and define another term to really show the curvature of the curve. You'll see why later. And that is, again using the arc length, but this term that we're going to define is called the unit tangent vector. Okay, because if you already know that the tangent vector is equal to this. Differentiating each of the components like that. Okay? However, this vector here can, has, can have a lag, the magnitude, and the magnitude may not necessarily be 1. It would be, for example, these are all the vectors like that, and you can, as you can see, there are different magnitudes over here. So, to introduce our next concept, we really need to define what we call as the unit tangent vector. Okay, now, sometimes, now we know that if we write this one over here, right? Sorry, I keep on from here. Okay. If you write this one over here, okay. This one is of unit length. I have shown in the previous section that if you write it in terms of S, the arc length, the length is always equal to 1. You can refer the next section to show, to prove that. However, sometimes it's inconvenient to define T in terms of S. So what do I mean by that? Remember S is equal to this? S is equal to that, so sometimes it's a bit difficult to find this equation because the modulus, the magnitude of the first derivative of the position vector can be quite difficult to evaluate. So, we still need to define a unit tangent vector in terms of this one over here, which by now is going to look like this because we know that to find the unit, we just simply take the magnitude and we divide it by the, sorry, we take the vector and we divide it by its own magnitude. So, we denote that as t, unit tangent vector in terms of t is equal to 1 divided by the magnitude of the vector itself and then you times by the vector. Okay. That is the definition of the unit tangent vector. Notice carefully that we are not differentiating this because when we differentiate it once, we get the tangent vector. We are defining the unit tangent vector as that. So this is just t in terms of the vector t in terms of t. And then what this becomes is that all become unit length. Okay? Because we're dividing it by its own magnitude. And also we know that if it's written in terms of s, it would simply become this. Okay? Because the magnitude of the of um, the position vector, the first derivative is divide um, in terms of s is simply 1. Okay, so that's easy as that. So this is defined as the unit tangent vector. However, for the purpose of this discussion, we would just imagine that we can find this one over here. The unit tangent vector in terms of S. You will see why in a minute. So now, curvature. The definition of curvature or the curvature is represented by a Greek alphabet which is kappa. Okay, and it's defined as the magnitude of the unit tangent vector and differentiating it with respect to the arc length. That gives us the curvature. Or it describes the amount of bending. Okay? The curvature or the amount of bending. Differentiating the unit tangent vector in terms of S and taking the magnitude. It simply means that if I were to show you a graphical representation of the curve like this, it measures the amount of bending. So, let's just think about it as this way. The arc length is over here like that. Let this be S. And then we got the unit tangent vector here and here. Okay. So, as you can see, the vector bends about 90 degrees like this. That is why we need to differentiate it, differentiating it with respect to the arc length. We cannot differentiate it with respect to t. It wouldn't make sense. We are measuring the vector, the direction of the vector t, 
unit tetrahedra, how it changes in terms of the arc length. So, as we move from the point of the curve over here to over here, how the vector changes direction, differentiating the unit tangent vector in terms of s. Similarly, if we take the same change in s and take the vectors over here and the vectors over here, as you can see, the amount of bending is not that distinct compared to here. This one is about 90 degrees, this one is about uh, 30 degrees. So that is why it means differentiating or observing the change of the unit tangent vector in terms of the change in the arc length. That is defined as the curvature. So now you would know. Okay, then after that, there's another term that is called the radius of curvature, and that is simply written as rho equals to 1 over the curvature here. Okay? Radius of curvature. So what could it mean? Well, definition-wise, radius of a curvature is the radius of the circle that describes, best describes the curve at that point. So if the bending is a lot, k is going to be high. 1 divided by a big number of k, you get a small number. So you're using a small circle to describe the curve. Illustrated over here, the bending is quite high, so the circle will be quite small here. The radius of curvature, radius of the circle. Conversely, if k is small, 1 divided by a small number, you get a bigger number. Well, a bigger number if then when k is high, so you get a bigger circle. That means a bigger circle is used to describe when the curvature is not that much. Likewise, over here. From here to here, we're using a big circle, as you can see. That is what rho is, radius of curvature. So we've got kappa equals to the curvature, rho equals to radius of the curvature. And lastly, we got the normal vector, okay? The, sorry, the normal unit vector, which we denote as n here, in terms of s, and it will be rho You differentiate the unit tangent vector in terms of S.